So I uh, would like to start that I agree with what our distinguished host, uh, Dr. Jens Weidman, said this morning uh, when he mentioned that digitalization may cause some Teutonic shifts, also for central bankers. Um, I'm going to take you in the next minutes uh, to, to Sweden, um, uh, where we're going cashless. Um, it has not been a conscious decision by the Riksbank or by any other legislators that we are going cashless. But the combination of technological change, people behavior changing, and uh, legislative uh, uh, circumstances is uh, creating some rapid movements. And uh, this is uh, a head-scratching moment for, for a central banker such as myself. Um, so first of all, uh, the value of cash in circulation in Sweden is decreasing quite rapidly. Uh, if we look for now and go back 10 years' time, I would say that the value of, of um, uh, notes and coins in circulation have been decreased by about 50%. And if we look at point-of-sale statistics, uh, about 15%, why 1-5, 15% of transactions are now done with cash. The remaining 85% are done with de debit card or something equivalent. And this is also a very rapid uh, decrease compared to a few years ago. So why is this happening? Well, as I said, the combination of, of uh, legal conditions and the rapid technological changes is pushing the evolution in Sweden because it is, a, it's a, it is an evolution rather than a cautious uh, um, uh, path. Uh, looking at the supply side of, of the payment market, you can say that the infrastructure um, system in Sweden there has, is the result of a cooperation between the banks that goes decades back. Um, they were uh, successful introducing cards in the 70s. They were very successful uh, getting rid of checks in the 1980s. Um, they were also uh, very successful launching together an instant payment app 2012 which makes it possible for people to make instant payments 24-7 uh, connected to, to people's mobile phones. Um, so supply side moving towards a cashless society has been very, very strong. And on the demand side, I would say that Swedes are in general very happy to be early adopters to new technology. We had subsidized computers at home in the 90s. We love our telephones, mobile phones. You would love it there, Stephen, with your phone. We have a lot of funny uh, gadgets you can use 24-7 if you wish. Early investment levels of broadbands to provide internet-based services has helped considerably. And you can also say, and this is perhaps more of a cliche, but you can say that the high level of trust in, in, uh, among uh, Scandinavians in general versus their uh, authorities and versus companies in general, including banks actually, has, has helped facilitate the, um, the um, uh, development. And more than 90% of the Swedes have access to, to debit cards. And um, if you ask them how, what sort of preferred way of, of uh, payment method would you like to use, um, most of them say cards rather than cash. Um, the Riksbank is also, um, you can say, guilty um, to, uh, to the development. The Riksbank, uh, my predecessors in the 1990s, decided that they would uh, gradually withdraw from handling uh, both the storages and the transports and logistics of cash uh, and pushed upon to the, to the private sector to, to handle uh, cash and see cash as one payment method of many. Uh, and then the true costs of, of, of handling uh, cash as a payment method became, became apparent to the private sector. And from there on, you can see that the private sector, meaning the banks and the shops, has been continuously uh, been trying to dismantle um, the, uh, the service level of, of cash as a, as a payment uh, method. And they have also dismantled the, um, the cash providing, providing network uh, across the Swedish ge geography. Um, I also say that the legal conditions here are important. It's not only technology and people uh, are being either forced or being uh, uh, preferred to change behavior. There are no legal requirements for shops or any other commercial entities in Sweden to, to uh, uh, accept cash as a payment method. Have you been to Stockholm or in Sweden, you may have come across little signs at the cashier saying cards only or our particular payment app only. 
and from a legislative point that is, that is um, uh, acceptable in Swedish legislation. Uh, what is more strange, perhaps, is not even banks uh, are under the obligation, legal obligation, to, to handle cash. Um, so, we are in a situation um, where money, or at least central bank money, our version of money, notes and coins, um, will not be very functional as a way of payment in the, in the two or three years from now, I would say, give or take, uh, give, give or take a few years. Uh, commercial entities will, will most likely stop accepting uh, cash uh, as a payment method. We as a central bank, uh, we are under legal obligation to provide notes, but um, I have an example of our product with them here. Uh, but it will probably only be used or more or less uh, uh, majority would probably see this just as a store of value rather than a medium of exchange. Not, uh, not, um, not, not very useful, at least, for, for commercial uh, medium of exchange. And then the questions open up, will, how useful will they actually be if they cannot be used on a broad scale uh, as a medium of exchange? Um, so the Riks Bank is now faced uh, with... Uh, with uh, um, three options, basically. Uh, the first option is to do nothing, uh, to uh, see um, cash being phased out as a commercial medium of exchange, uh, and uh, uh, cash will uh, be offered from the central bank, but mainly just as a store of value for those few uh, who still would like to use it. Um, the second uh, choice the Riksbank Bank has is to try to preserve uh, the usage of cash one way or the other. Uh, we could ask the Parliament for making it compulsory for banks to handle cash, or we can even ask the Parliament to make it compulsory for shops to, to accept cash. But there is so far, and I don't think there will be, um, uh, a, a strong majority or any kind of majority politically to, uh, to conserve the, or preserve the, the cash usage in, in Swedish society in that way. We may also only slow down uh, the evolution, uh, but, but not really change the trend. And the third choice for the Riksbank, Bank, uh, and this is something that I'm going to just broadly introduce you to, is to um, look into uh, a more modern version of central bank money a digital-issued uh, uh, central bank money, what we have called, or I have sort of christened the product, should the Riksbank Bank issue an e-krona. And this would be a central bank digital currency, same exchange or same value as, as the notes and coins, but accessible through the digital means instead. And this opens up a great variety of really, really interesting but equally difficult questions which really strike to the bone of what central bank is all about and what sort of offer we want to, to, to give to the society. Should the scope be small scale or large scale? Should we have it token based, very simple prepaid cards, that sort of technology? Or should it be large scale, more register based currency? Should there be account based or not? Should it be accounts in the central bank or should we push it to the banks to, to keep the central bank's accounts or not? Should it have interest rates on the central bank digital currency or should it be interest rate free in the same way as, as notes and coins are interest rate free? We are looking into the technology issues. Um, and uh, in the same way as we would never uh, considering issuing a note that is easy to counterfeit, we would also not uh, consider issuing an e-krona that is easy to counterfeit since uh, confidence in central bank is, is, is very central to us all. Um, the integrity issue is also very critical. I would say most Swedes seem to have, be happy to give away the integrity since they are very happy using the commercial uh, payment methods, but that may change. And then the question is, what sort of integrity should this, this e-krona provide versus the needs to adhere to, to anti-money laundering and, and anti-terrorist financing legislation uh, scopes. We also have our consequences during launch of a central bank digital currency, how it will work in a steady state. But for financial stability purposes, what would happen in a, in a, in a financial turmoil if you have a straight access from commercial bank money into central bank uh, accounts? So, as you understand, we are quite busy up in Stockholm looking into these things, and we have allowed ourselves 
two years, which is a very short time, just to take a first um, step on analyzing the needs, uh, the potential design, and what we see as the potential consequences of a digital currency. We haven't made a decision whether we're going to launch something or not. But no matter the preferences that we may uh, express later on, we have to do the homework. We don't see complacency and, and uh, being on the sideline as, as society moves forward and, and um, people change preferences is an option because for us the future, the technological future, has already happened in Sweden. Thank you. Thank you. I can see a kind of a gloomy future with sort of banks uh, sort of taking over more and more of the, the high-powered money-making payment infrastructure. And then in Europe, we have the PhD2 directive coming in. You can see the potential for a fragmenting of this new sort of more privately run private market. Uh, and then we'll end up in a situation where you have Amazon money, we have Hilton Hotel money, we have Starbucks money. Uh, and then we're sort of back to a very old debate again, sort of uh, 19th century debate when different banks issued notes and it became very impractical. You had to have various tables with exchange rates between different private banks. So the idea to actually fund, fund uh, um, central banks was about standardizing um, a unit of account uh, and also um, nationalized the Signorage. Um, that was some of the purposes of, of issuing a, or starting central banks, but was mainly standardizing payments. And we may end up in a situation where we have to think about these things again. And, and preferably, uh, central banks has to be a little bit ahead of the curve there, rather than ending up in a very fragmented uh, money creation situation. That would, the, the society would not uh, cherish us if we do uh, uh, sleep on the helm there. I'd like to shift the focus to the normative question. It seems very likely that central bank issued digital currency would crowd out private money, at least to some extent. And I'd uh, we'd be interested to hear your views on what the social costs and benefits of that are going to be. Are there large social benefits of private money creation that we would lose in the process? So can I start well, on please. that one? Uh, so, uh, well, I think the short answer is depend, it depends on how you design the offer of central bank digital currency. If you just assume that you, you do it fairly unattractive in the sense that you can only have an account at the central bank, but you cannot very easily move in, with the, the, that kind of central bank money in and out of, of the banking system and use, the, use it as a medium of exchange, uh, then it won't be very, very, uh, very, I don't see a great risk, but I see that there will still be a, a more modern exit for people who wouldn't like to stay and be dependent on the commercial bank system. Another way to do it uh, sort of less attractive, but still an option for those who like to have access to central bank digital currency is just to have a, a card with a limited amount uh, possible to charge on the card for those who like to do their daily transactions in a, in a, in a money that isn't central bank money. So, uh, but if you go all in, uh, then that would potentially um, um, revolutionize how uh, universal banks or, or the, the business models, what they look like today. Uh, they would probably uh, have to pay up a lot more than they do presently to attract deposits. They may lose the deposit base more or less altogether. And then we, we will get very different uh, kinds of, 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 of banks. We will not have the maturity transformation in the banks. We will not have the mismatch in the banks. We will have, we will have a, a, a different uh, financial sector than we have been used to. And a little bit of friendly, cautious uh, advice. We didn't expect this kind of very rapid change in behavior in Sweden to happen. Uh, it, all has, it has taken us all by surprise, but when people change behavior and the technology is there to, to facilitate it, you, you, you can get surprised. So uh, don't, don't um, uh, be too complacent about it. That's, that's my friendly advice.